On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 2022. We're going to be taking a look at Crowded House and they're going to be performing Don't Dream It's Over. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So we'll get the guys up on screen. I've got the guitar out as you can tell because we'll probably go through a few chords to see what's going on. But I have run the lead vocal of Niels through the pitch monitoring software so we can take a look at that as well. But let's have a listen and see how they get on. There's a battle of hell and embassies are lost, but you'll never see the end of the road while you're traveling with me. Hey now, hey now, don't dream. Suspicion that there's no proof. In the paper today, tales of war and of ways, but you turn right over to the TV page. And I I'm just going to jump in here. As always, there's a link in the description below if you guys want to watch this the whole way through without me interrupting it. But, I mean, this is such a great live performance. And just for reference, this is totally live. And I know that the definition of live nowadays is changing to just meaning that the people are there. <laughs> and it doesn't mean they're necessarily playing or singing live. But this is the old version of live. So everything we're hearing is actually happening. And that's the same for Neil's vocal as well. He's totally live and it's not auto-tuned. It's not pitch corrected. So uh, yeah, this is just an old school performance, which is great because it's from 2022. When you're talking about a live performance like this, I mean, tempo is so important, but just playing dynamically, everything that's being put into it. I want to take it back to maybe where we can get into the second verse because here the thing that stands out and not that it's going to stand out to everybody but to me is just the way that the tempo is ever so slightly relaxed from the chorus into the verse. Let's just have a listen to this. I mean, it is so subtle. There's probably a change of maybe two to three beats per minute that's taken out when we then get back into the verse. And the reason why this is just so impressive is especially with live performances and the adrenaline and things that can happen on stage when you're performing and playing something that should be a slow tempo number. And, and this has to be, if this starts to get pushed, then it's pretty much game over from, from a feel perspective of this song. So just the way that this relaxes from, and, and the drum fill is, I mean, we can start to hear it just ever so slightly start to relax and be behind the beat, but then the drum fill just solidifies that slow in tempo into the verse. But uh, 
Listen again. And it's great because everyone's on the same page here. But yeah, I mean, it's just all about feel. And of course, you know, the vocal having the freedom uh, to go where Neil wants it to go is really important as well. And you know, the vocal is great, but quickly into the guitar. This sus2 sound that we've got, and I know that I'm on half of the screen at the moment, so you won't be able to see me particularly clearly, but even this intro, all we've got is the E flat sus2. And it's you know, really simple, actually. We go down too, so we're taking off the little finger. Don't know if you can see it, but by taking off that little finger, it means now we get that E flat seventh chord, which is still the sus2, so it would be written as E flat seventh seven sus two so it sounds like a very complicated chord but all you do on the guitar is take off your little finger in order to get it so but i mean just sus two chords just sound so nice by themselves but anyway getting into that you know and then we go down to uh, c minor and now we're in a flat g and then, so yeah, back up to the E flat sus two. So it's relatively straightforward from a chord perspective, kind of all the way through this is is quite straightforward, which you know it means it's all about melody and it's all about yeah the, the mood and the feel, the lyrical content, and that, that you know you don't have to be doing things that are you know, technically really impressive and playing a million miles an hour. This is all about just having great melody and writing a good song. <laughs> that's that's what Neil has done here. And I always say that that's a, a totally different skill in itself to be able to just write a good song. It doesn't matter how much technical ability you might have, at, you know, singing or playing an instrument, learning to then put that into melodic content that hits a chord with, with an audience and be able to connect with, with an audience with your playing or with your voice is another thing entirely. So, I mean, this is just a great song and I know that it's been covered loads of different times by lots of different artists. Just in case you wanted the chords to busk through this, this isn't gonna be an instructional video, but I know that you couldn't see the guitar. We've got the E flat sus two, C minor, over to the A flat, G back up to the E flat sus two and chorus wise A flat B flat E flat C minor and then back into the verse. So I think that's pretty much it. So there might be a few extra chords in the middle eight, but yeah, in terms of getting the verse, like I said, it's, it's not complicated. It's just yeah, all about melody. But let's just have a little look at Neil's vocal here. There is freedom within. There is freedom without. Try to catch the dirt in a paper cup. There is freedom within. There is freedom without. Try to catch the dirt in a paper cup. There's a battle here. Been in battle so long, but you'll never see the end of the road while you're traveling with me. So, of course, because this is a natural vocal, it means that he can kind of slide and, and flow wherever he wants to go. I will just get this up on screen so you can see exactly what's going on. And as you do scroll through this, you'll see that, yeah, Neil is really accurate pitch wise. He just kind of checks in, you know, like this with the C4 just being bang on, but then we've still got that flow to his voice. I'll just let it play on. Head now, head now, don't dream it's over. And we've got this, what I would consider more of a head voice sound with air rather than flipping up into that true falsetto sound. Head out, head out, don't dream it's over. Yes, we kind of get this 
don't the heavier sound at the bottom don't dream and then he kind of goes up to that lighter sound uh which is the a sharp four don't dream it's over and then kind of brings it back down again so i mean it's so smooth the way that he kind of gets into that head now, head now, don't dream it's over guys oh, it's really difficult because in in terms of find or saying exactly what he's doing, don't, there's enough of a jump to don't dream to kind of say that it's like a head voice with air, but he might be flipping over into his true falsetto sound. I've just made the performance screen a little bit wider so we can see more of what's going on because in this second verse, I think something happens, which can happen all the time when you're playing live, something different happens that you're not expecting, or you do something, and in this case, I think Neil takes a breath during a vocal phrase where he doesn't normally take a breath. And because he's done that, after it's then he has a look at his guitarist and has a little smile, but nobody notices because this is the thing about top level musicians and Neil having played this for so many years, even though to him it was a bit of a mistake what he did, nobody else notices that he's just taken a breath but because of the way that he manages to cover it. But have a listen to this. Now I'm turning my car, there's a hole in the roof, my possessions causing me suspicion that there's no proof. So he just has that little look over because he takes a breath before causing. So I think it's the fact that normally he'll, he'll take his breath and have this whole, my possessions are causing me suspicions, but there's no proof. He'll do that all in one breath, but he's gone, my possessions are causing, and he takes another breath there, which of course you don't really notice and you wouldn't notice it unless, you know, someone like me points it out, but it's obvious that after, and I, I think that's what it has to be because there's nothing musically that's happening here where there's a wrong chord being played, you know, the keys are fine, guitar's fine, bass is fine. I think it's just that little breath that he takes that he thinks is, is wrong because he doesn't normally do it, but because he's so good, you don't really notice. He recovers instantly, you know, and that breath is really quick. I'm turning my car, there's a hole in the roof. My possessions causing me suspicion that there's no Today. And let me just point out that Neil, when he's looking across, he kind of has, has a little smile and uh, you're not going to be able to see it unless I, uh, how am I going to make this more visible? Uh, you're just going to have to take my word for it, that he's jumping from his, his G and you know, it's, it's not the biggest jump, but he's jumping up to the E flat sus two while looking across and smiling. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> let's take that little bit of uh, musicianship and ability into consideration. Oh yeah, he has a very quick look down to make sure. Yeah, but the, the, the thing is that once he's made that movement up, you've got to be in position to get that high E string. You get thought processes. Neil has a thought process that isn't usually there. So then he turns around to acknowledge that, oh, something weird happened there. But at the same time, while he's doing all that, he's relying on that muscle memory of going to the G and being able to get up to that E flat sus two chord and make it clean. On the shadows Aha! And right there, we had not this kind of flip into 
I mean, I'm almost inclined to say that it is his falsetto because it's so much lighter, but then he gets into now a connected sound. So listen again. So now he's kind of getting that connected sound rather than there, hey now, hey. So it's the same note, hey now, and there. So a definite difference between those vocal cord configurations. And yeah, it's great because it shows that, you know, Neil's got that range up there as well if he, if he wants to use a, a kind of mixed voice and head voice sound. And when I said earlier about not necessarily needing loads of technical ability to write a great song, what I love about this performance in the song is the solo because it's understated but it serves the song. It's not out of place, it's not somebody trying to show off uh, how fast they can play, how many notes they can fit in. It's all about just being in that right spot, in the right mood. But have a listen to this. I mean, it's really nice. We've got loads of reverb on there. So it, it, it's kind of floating in the mix. And we've kind of got, if anything, more of a rhythm fill kind of sound. We've got this. Kind of like that. Oh, I think there's a little bend in there as well. So yeah, I mean, we've got some really cool n note choices going on with the melody. Um, actually, and I think we've, I think actually at the end there we have a full bend there, like going a tone rather than a semitone. The semitones still work, but the, the full tone bend now really sets us back into you know, where we are going into, which is that E flat uh, sus2 chord. This isn't an instructional video, but it's just really nice the way it's, that it's been pieced together. And you probably couldn't even see what I was playing there anyway, because I'm on half of the screen. But <laughs> it's just really nicely put together because the song is the song and nothing detracts from that. And that can be the case sometimes, especially when you have instrumental sections and somebody kind of wants to get in the limelight and wants to kind of take all the attention. You know, you, you've got to serve the song. That's the most important thing. And that's why every huge hit, you know, across all time has always, if there has been an instrumental section, it's always been tasteful and it's always served the song. It sounded like it should have been there rather than, you know, those videos that you see online where there might be a drummer who is playing in such a way that it's like he's at the wrong gig. Tasteful solo, really nicely done. The reverb just sits in there, you know, for this live performance as well. Great sound. But anyway, Thank you guys for requesting this particular video for me to take a look at. And as always, keep the suggestions and requests coming in the comments section below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys at the next one. Rock!